Ladies and gentlemen, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have a new video. We're going to show you how easy it is to pair the Darwin Tiny Ape with an ELRS transmitter such as the TX16S Bardwell edition here. So this is the ELRS, not the foreign one, and that is a bind and fly pre-built FPV drone right out of the box. This is a very easy Express LRS setup and get you going quick in the air. So if you find value in this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that bell and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of tutorials coming on the ELRS systems, on setting up drones and all that stuff you need to get into the air flying FPV. Also, we have a very active uh, Facebook group. Uh, a lot of guys posting questions, comments, and their own videos up there. So join that one. The link is all below in the description. All right, guys, so we're gonna show you just how easy it is to pair up your Darwin Tiny Ape. Um, to an ELRS transmitter. In this case, we're gonna actually use the Bardwell edition with the ELRS TX16S. Um, so first things first, we're gonna get into our ELRS menu, whether you have a Zorro or not, there'll be a menu. So you'll go to your system, and then you'll go to Express ELRS, not ELRS, that's the older generation. Express LRS is what we're gonna use here. It will load up a uh, field here, um, and then we're gonna go down and pretty much the other stuff you can adjust and if you wanna read up on ELRS, there's different things you can do with that. Um, we're gonna leave it in hybrid mode and all that. Um, binding, you'll go to there, but before we actually hit bind, let's get the receiver into binding mode. So okay. the receiver we're gonna to have to put into bind mode. I'm gonna turn this trusty old laptop here. It's about to get retired, but we're gonna, you will need the newer beta flight for this because it's running um, 4.3 out of the box. Hold on, let me say one thing. Every quad always bind without the props. Yes. Okay. So you plugged it into the. And USB. this one will actually power the receiver, SPI receiver off USB only. Okay. We'll connect. We're running Betaflight 4.3. We're gonna go. It's usually in this tab here, but go to the receiver tab, and then all we gotta do is make sure Express LRS, and that's pre-configured on the Tiny Ape. Um, then we're just gonna click Bind Receiver here. And now it's been told to start looking for a pair. And now we're okay. going to go back to the radio and simply press the bind button. Yes, I know it's touch screen, but I like pushing the buttons regardless. And that should pretty much do it. Uh, RF signal critical. Boom, paired. Telemetry recovered. Okay. So now we know, and if I move the sticks around, you'll see on the screen. Oh, wow, that was it's as simple as that. Easy, holy cow. Um, so this guy, I'm just going to power cycle it. Okay. For so power cycle, just turn it on, turn it off. Yeah, I just unplug, unplug, plug back in. But you'll see. Now with it being this close, it might do weird stuff. Yeah, like you're that. swamping it. Um, but basically from there, on the tiny eight, it's just a matter of one. Make sure your channel mapping is correct. So throttle's throttle. So we know that's right. Um, the only other things that really do is the not the pit tuning, but the rate profile. Out of the box, it might not be comfortable for some people. It might be too low. That's 670 degrees a second. Um, I personally prefer like 800, 800, and like 550 for flying around here in the front yard at the building. Um, Expo, I like a little Expo. Some people don't that teach their own on that one. Well, put, put, okay. Yeah, we so, don't want to share about what you do because then that's not gospel. Yeah, I mean, I'm, different. I'm not trying to preach anything on that one, yeah. but that's something you might want to adjust there just because for some people, the all might be a little too sensitive, but... We're gonna to go to the modes tab. Okay. And you will need to have gone and assigned um, channels on your radio. So if you got a brand new radio, we're gonna go back to the radio for a second. Okay. If you have, I'm gonna exit out of this. So if your radio is a default model, now um, Radio Master does have a default profile under quad. Um, this is a completely blank model that I started here and you can see some of the stuff we've done. I'll show you. Like if you get one that's pre-configured from us, uh, as an example, you'll have the mixes already assigned here. Um, pretty much all the switches have been assigned for something for this particular model. Um, go sub trims. Um, I just did that so we got that 1,000, 2,000 range, um, which again, you could do it yourself, no problem there. Explain um, some of the switches you set up. Flight yeah, modes. Well, and, it's actually okay. here where I also did the special functions to play the sound. So if I hit arm, flight modes. Stuff like that, and then like a pre-arm switch. Pre so stuff like that. Um, Telemetry screen, if you want to get further into it, you can add more um, sensors, stuff like that, etc. But pretty much, um, you want to make sure, well, that's the name. I set up a throttle timer on this one. But you also want to make sure your internal RF is set to crossfire. Um, 
the, I think on yeah on the Bardwell one you don't have the option. So it's set there, and that's make sure it's on the internal RF, and that's pretty much there. But once you've assigned the switches to do something on your mixes page, then you'll see when you move switches on the radio, it'll actually assign the auxing. So really, like let's just say these are not here anymore. I'm gonna assign an arming switch. Um, I know switch F is what I want, so I'm gonna literally just flip it with it on auto, and it found the one I assigned. Um, I'm gonna move this, just drag this little over here, because I want it to only arm when it's switched towards me. Um, I'm gonna add a range here, so I'm just gonna, again, move my switch, switch B that I have assigned for flight modes here, uh, three position switch, and I'm gonna move angle over here. I'm uh, moving down, I'm gonna add horizon there, just gonna put it in the middle. And then acro will be, um, there is no acro thing here. You actually just have to, basically the lack of horizon, lack of angle will be acro mode. Um, from there, I want to set a beeper. I'll set that up. And this, that one has a beeper? Uh, it's a motor beacon. Okay. So, um, and that's something you can set up in beta flight there. Uh, just different so, things there. Now, um, pre-arm, I am going to assign pre-arm on a switch. So flip the switch and then boom, now it's aux four is what I happen to have it set to. Moving down, I'm not gonna mess with any of those from there. Now you brought up the beeper thing. If you wanna do motor beacon, you go to the configuration and D-shot beacon, and you'll just assign it from there. Um, and you can do it, you know, if you lose signal, you know, if the radio start beeping, or if you want it purely assigned to a switch. So you can set your fail safe to that also instead of that. Um, and it's, it's not good for the motor beep, beeps, right? For the stay on for Continuous time. beeps can get the motors hot, so you yeah. gotta be careful it's not setting it too high of a level. Yeah. Um, these little guys should be okay at three now, though. Um, it, it's, of course, it's not as loud as a buzzer. You can add a buzzer down the road, stuff like that. But, but you, um, that's pretty much all there is to do to get it going. Um, is there more stuff? Yes. Uh, you can play with OSD, assign what you want to do in the OSD. Now the on-screen display has very basic stuff going on here. They did set up the LQ, um, just very basic, but it's just a matter of clicking and dragging and moving what you want over there. And that's actually pretty fun. Yeah, and then you can actually assign your OSD profiles to a switch as well and have mm -hmm. three different profiles. So say you want one screen, just nothing on it. You want one with gobs of information mm -hmm. and one very basic, that's, depending on what you're doing. That's exactly you what I do. That. Yep, my, my takeoff mode has everything on it. And then when so, I'm flying, I have just the voltage. And the last thing is video transmitter. You can assign your channel and all that. Um, keep in mind this little guy does go up to 600 milliwatt. Uh, if you're going to do that, don't let it sit on the bench for a long period of time. They do get hot, they do get fast, and then they start getting fuzz out until they cool down again. So I would probably leave it at 200 to start with, and then as you get everything set up, if you decide you're going to fly at longer distances, switch to 600. But 200's been working really well for us out here with the metal building and all that uh, without getting a lot of cross pathing. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is there. You could also do a... Um, Low power disarm until first arm, stuff like that. But that's already set up. The VTX table's already set up from the factory. So they've done a good job on getting it to where it's flyable. You just have to assign the modes. That's the big thing. It's just assigning the modes and getting it going. A lot of it's going to end up being preference. Um, the days of having a drone that's not going to work out of the box at all because it's just completely misconfigured and orientation on gyros, all that, uh, you're not seeing that as much with decent companies. There are still a couple companies out there. I don't know what they're smoking, but basically like the Darwin stuff, from what I've seen pretty much out of the box, they're pretty much set up other than assigning modes. Uh, the only other thing I would probably do on configuration, um, you can also set a mix or anything, but I would change your arming angle to 180, um, just so you don't have to worry about it not arming if you're stuck in a tree or something like that, or you can arm upside down. And the other thing, I, I like to turn off air mode and only have air mode so like this, I would change that. I would set this to 180, um, just to keep it simple. Now, I mean, there's other ways of setting it up and all that, but and then in the modes, I would turn air mode should be now an option. Yep, right here. So I'm gonna click it there, add the range. I'm gonna flip my flight mode switch, and I'm not gonna have air mode on with angle mode because that's when it hits the ground, it bounces, goes crazy, and can fly away. So I set it for horizon and acro only in those two positions. And all I did was cut, drag the bar over and save. Uh, if you've watched any of our videos setting up like the ET-125 and all that, this will look very familiar because guess what? It's the same thing. Um, other than the binding button. But yeah, pretty much that's about all there is to it. This thing's really easy to get going. Again, if you don't want to do that, you want to save time, you want more of a turnkey setup, 
Uh, check out our website. We do offer this drone with a radio with the ELRS configured, ready to go so it's turnkey and get you flying quicker. Okay, that's it. Good job, Will. Yeah, that, but that's the easiest way to set these up um, and get you going. These things are pretty well configured out of the box. It's just a matter of setting it up to match to your radio and get you going. All right, that's it for this video. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see next done with this. I think we talked about doing some telemetry stuff on the next video, maybe? Yeah, a little bit of that yep. probably. So we'll do that and be sure to stay tuned for that video.